Hi everyone. As we all know, this last year has been hard on all of us, and it's no different for children. As we are stepping into Children's Mental Health Week this week, I'm going to focus the next seven days on giving you guys seven tips for children's mental health. Tip number one: encourage expression of feelings. Kids go through a complex range of emotions, just like adults. They feel frustrated, excited, jealous, frightened, embarrassed, and a whole lot of other feelings. But often, kids don't have the vocabulary to express what they're feeling. So instead, they may show their feelings in other ways, like facial expressions, behavior, crying, and sometimes it can result in problematic behavior if they don't know how to express themselves well. So as parents, it's really important to guide them on this journey and have a chat with them. showing them the different ways that they can express themselves and giving a name and label to their feelings. Tip number 2, provide structure. Children crave predictability and a routine. So maintaining consistency and ensuring your kids know what to expect day to day will help them manage their feelings. They want to know what activity they're going to do next, what consequences they will experience if they break the rules, and what privileges they will receive for good behavior. Especially in this current condition, the uncertainty regarding their school year is very disconcerting to children. So it's really important that we provide them with an everyday structure in their day-to-day life. So keep a calendar, maintain a daily routine, and also plan a fun family day each week. Tip number three: boost self-esteem. Helping a child develop a healthy self-esteem can give a significant boost to their mental health. Give genuine and realistic praise. Saying things like "You're the smartest kid in the school" won't help them develop a healthy self-esteem. Instead, praise their efforts and steer clear of exaggerated compliments. Help your child develop a healthy self-talk. If they say negative things like "I'll never be good at math," it might be tempting to say "Of course you will," but that won't help them develop a healthy inner dialogue. Instead, ask questions like "What could you do to get better?" This will help them come to healthier conclusions. And finally, if your child does come to you with a problem, resist the urge to jump in and provide a solution. When a kid speaks, their brain is literally rewiring itself to understand the problem. So listening to them and allowing them to finish gives them a chance to process the question better and gives them a chance to come up with their own solutions. And being able to do things on their own and come up with solutions on their own will also help boost their self-esteem. Step number 4 promote healthy habits teach our kids to develop healthy habits that are good both for their body and their mind so eating healthy diet good sleep hygiene and plenty of exercise for physical exercise find an activity that they really enjoy whether it be team sports gymnastics or even dancing research has shown that mindfulness and gratitude can also have a big impact on mental health So you can start a simple routine with your kids where they write down one thing they are grateful for each day and will set a good tone for the rest of their lives. Tip number 5: Nurture friendships and relationships. The relationship that kids have with their parents is vital, but it's not the only one that matters. A mentally healthy child will have a number of relationships with other family members, like grandparents and cousins, as well as friends and neighbors. Even if you're the kind of parent that loves to spend alone time with your little ones, give them opportunity to connect with others, especially their best friends. Accomplishing this task during a pandemic may be difficult, but try to get creative and do what you can to help your kids connect with others. Tip number 6: Watch out for red flags. If you notice that your child is overly anxious about normal things like meeting new people, there might be a problem. Likewise, a change in mood or behavior that lasts for more than 2 weeks that could be a sign of a problem. With all the uncertainty around the current school year, be extra vigilant if you notice any changes in your child's sleeping habits, eating habits, or even if they seem more irritable. Look out also for changes in concentration and focus. Before you get too worried though, remember that the problem may not be too serious or long-lasting. But if it does persist, then it might be time to seek professional help. Tip number 7. Take care of yourself first. Children are at an even greater risk of developing mental illness if one or both their parents have mental health problems. Kids look up to their parents to learn how to cope with stressful and anxiety-provoking situations. Make sure you set a positive example of how you deal with difficult situations. 
Make sure that your kids know that a mix of struggle and strength is normal for everyone. Research has shown that when a parent receives therapy for their mental illness problems, their children's mental health improves as well.